Namaskar and welcome and uh, today uh, we are taking you on a transformative uh, journey with uh, spiritual guru uh, Sundar Gopal uh, Prabhu who is the founder of ISKM uh, uh, which is uh, International uh, Shri Krishna Mandir and it, it definitely is uh, worldwide and but he is from uh, Singapore and he has been in US uh, you know from April 4th through uh, May 14th and uh, he is uh, here to share profound teachings from the Bhagavad Gita and uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. With over uh, 4.5 decades of dedicated service spreading uh, Sanatan Dharma across 15 countries, he brings a wealth of knowledge to audiences, seamlessly you know, integrating technology to enhance the experience. So without further ado, uh, let's immerse ourselves in authentic uh, Vedic wisdom. So Jai Shri Krishna, Namaskar. Hare Krishna. So let me first of all welcome you to our studio and really uh, it's an honor to have you with us in the studio. But uh, first of all, let's start with, I want you to talk about yourself. So what motivated you to take this path? I came across uh, my spiritual master, I'm sure you know, he came to America in 1965. Mm -hmm. His name is A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, as he's commonly known as Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. And I guess we will show you a picture of him if you are not familiar. <laughs> right. And he came in 65 and he started the movement. And in 1975, about 10 years later, I got one of his Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. So when I read that book, I decided to kind of dedicate my life to his service. Hmm. And that kind of spurred me on from 1975 to the present. Uh, studying his books and practicing Krishna consciousness and that led me from one thing to another hmm. and here now I'm back here I originally I came to America in 1983 and I left for about 84 so I'm coming back almost 40 years Wow! since then hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a long time. Yes, so yes. many things have happened. So, I mean, because I'm, we are preaching, especially after the COVID, we had a lot of online classes. Hmm. And that kind of spurred our ISKM to come to the shores of America, hmm. where some devotees have taken up the process. Hmm. And because of their sincerity, they have invited me to come hmm. and help them in furthering the organization here in America. Mm -hmm. This is how it is, uh, you know. Wonderful. But you know, Prabhuji, I just want to know in your view, what does the like concept of God mean in our everyday life? See, God is running everything. You cannot separate God from anything at all because this material world is also part of His creation. Mm. See? And actually, in fact, this material body is also created by him. Hmm. And if you, when we speak about you, like for example, we say, my head, my hand, my leg, my everything. But who is the my we are referring to? Pretty much many people don't even know or notice even this question. Right. Because they think, my, it's me. Who's me? I was just recently in Mexico. Oh, sorry, I just did a class in uh, Berkeley University and I asked all foreign students and I asked this question mm. and everyone was puzzled as though they never heard this in their life, you know. Wow. And that's a fact because we as spirit soul, we are sitting in this body mm. and when sitting in the body, we also have the Paramatma, the super soul, Krishna in mm. our body. Mm. So all our actions and everything, God in our body, he is actually the witness mm. and he acts also as the permitter. So, being in this situation, we cannot detach ourselves from God because it is not we are the doer. Hmm. I think I'm doing, but it's That's not a fact. <laughs> right, right. Otherwise, why you are forced into doing something you don't want to do? Right. So, that means there is a controller. So, we have to understand this. And if we understand this and relink ourselves with God, hmm. Krishna, hmm. then our life becomes very smooth. Either we are here in the material world or we are in the spiritual world or even in hell everything becomes fine because we are with God. Right. See, so that is what actually the whole thing is about, to become again Krishna conscious. Wow. Right now we are bodily conscious. I am concerned about myself. Hmm. I want to enjoy this body. 
Hmm. But in the process, I'm getting into a lot of problems. And what is the real problem? The real problem is birth, death, old age and disease. Hmm. So every one of us has taken birth and death is certain. Absolutely. And for one who has died, birth is also certain. Right. So this is called samsara, cycle of birth and death. So, you know, since you're talking about problems and, you know, I just want to know from you that there is so much going on in everybody's lives these yes. days. So, what are like the practical steps to achieve that inner peace? See, there are three modes of mental nature. Hmm. There's Sattva Gun or mode of goodness. Hmm. There's Raja Gun, mode of passion. And there's Tamagun, the mode of ignorance. Hmm. So, if you go into the mode of Raja Gun and Tamagun, then you are going to get yourself into Kama, Krodha, Loba, Matsarya, Mada, hmm. uh, one thing after the other. Hmm. And this actually is the result of our suffering. Because when you get into sense gratification, then you get pretty much covered over. Hmm. Hmm. And it leads to madness. So why you want to go in that direction? And then how you come out of this? That's why Krishna, when he was asked by Arjuna, Hmm. Why the living entity is compelled to do sinful activities as though he is unwilling? Mm -hmm. And Krishna replied, it is because of the mode of passion and ignorance. And this brings about karma and krodha. Mm -hmm. So if people can understand this, then they can work themselves to coming to the mode of goodness, which is only possible by being in God consciousness, then their problem is all overcome. Right. It's a simple thing, but nobody wants to do that. Right. So, you know, since you are saying nobody wants to do that, and of course, with advancement in science and everything else, you know, people, as I said earlier, everybody is busy with their lives. And do you still believe that, you know, people still need to find that faith in God in this day and age? You have to. Otherwise, there's no way out of this cycle of birth and death. Hmm. This cycle of birth and death has been going on for millions of years. And we have taken umpteen number of birth and death. Hmm. And not only human life, there are 8.4 million species. It says in the Vishnu Puranam that if you are not careful, you can go down to lower species. Hmm. And the lower species is the, the, the fish, fish body. Hmm. And I mean, look, if you want to end up in this kind of lower species and suffer all the way, I mean, no intelligent person will want to do that. Yes. So the idea of human birth, because to get human birth is rare opportunity. Hmm. Because only in this human birth, you can make some inquiry. Right. You can pray. You hmm. can learn about God. And you can escape the cycle of birth and death. Hmm. So if you don't utilize your human faculty to kind of uh, go to a higher standard, then you are no better than an animal. So why you want to do that? Right. So in order to understand this, they need help of a spiritual person who is coming in line hmm. from Krishna, hmm. Parampara. Hmm. And when he comes in contact, this is called yoga. This is called real yoga, linking with God. Hmm. Then his life becomes successful. Hmm. Just a simple example, a person may be suffering and loitering on the street. And if someone finds him and says, look, hey, I know you. I know your father, now I'll take you to your father. Then when he brings him back to his rich father, all his problem is solved. Solved, yes. The same way, if you know our rich father Krishna and you get back to him, then you have no more problems. Hmm. The problem is to go back to Krishna. Right, right. <laughs> so material world, Krishna says, this place is Dukhalyam Ashaswatam. Hmm. It is not a sukha alayam, it is a dukkha alayam. Hmm. Although we think that we are happy, but it's temporary. A little bit of happiness and so much of distress. I, I think everything is temporary. Yes. Yes. So therefore, if there is some temporary world, there must be a permanent world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Krishna said, that's my world, mm -hmm. Vaikuntha, where you don't have any anxiety. Mm -hmm. Kunta means anxiety. Vaikuntha means devoid of anxiety. Mm. That's why he says, Yad gatva nirvartante tad dhamam paramam mama. If you come to my abode, then you don't return again to this temporary world. Wow. 
So why not we make an attempt since we are doing so much to take care of our family, our children and so many things and we understand this is all going to go to waste. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why not do something which is permanent? That is to save our soul. Right. So that's what actually the Vedic scriptures is thinking about, is speaking about. Ataha Brahma Jigyasa. Now that you got human body, you please inquire about Brahman. Hmm. Hmm. See? Don't stay in darkness, come to light. So why not make that attempt? And India is a big, I mean, it's a very, very uh, spiritual country. Absolutely. God Absolutely. walked there. Hmm. You cannot say nobody knows God, but God actually walked. Hmm. Krishna, Rama, Chaitanya, Mahal, so many hmm. personalities hmm. and Acharyas. Matvacharya, Ramanuj, Acharya, Shankaracharya. So all of them have come hmm. to help us, you know, educate us. But instead of that, we are running to America. And here what we are doing? McDonald's and Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola. This is what we are <laughs> getting ourselves contaminated. Right. I was just wondering, since, you know, since we met, like it has been whatever, an hour, you have been like Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Is uh, Lord Krishna the only God? Yes, Krishna declared in the Bhagavad Gita that I am the Supreme Personality of God. But we have other gods too. Why ah, should we The other gods are called, they are the universal managers. That's why they're called demigods. There are 330 million of them. Hmm. And they are in charge of various departments. For example, the sun. The Surya Bhagavan, he mm. is in charge of the sun, mm. he is not in charge of the moon. And in the moon you got Chandra, he is in charge of the moon. Mm. So everyone has got their departments and there are 330 million of them. But Krishna says, I aham adi deva anam, mm. I am the source of all these demigods. Mm-hmm. See, and the demigods also acknowledge that. They also say Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. Lord Brahma is also saying Iswara Paramaha Krishna, Sachid Ananda Vigraha, Anadir Adir Govinda, Sarva Karana Karana. He is saying Iswara among all controllers, the Supreme Controller is Krishna. Yeah. And Lord Shiva even saying Aradhanam Sarvesham Vishnu Aradhanam Param again. So you see, this is the problem. The problem is that we are not educated properly because we are not consulting the scriptures. And, and also in the Skanda Purana, it just says that if you worship Krishna, you are worshipping everybody. So everybody is so short of time and everybody wants quick, quick, quick thing. Just why not do this one thing? And everybody is satisfied. Hmm. Yes? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> yes. That and is. you're going to get so much of benefit. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Ananyaya chintayanto maam ye jana prajupasate tesham nitya bhyuktanam yoga jemam vahamiyam for, for my devotee who is constantly thinking of me, for him, I carry what he likes and preserve what he has. Hmm. So, what's the problem? The hmm. problem is to link with him. And it's very simple. It's not very sophisticated that you are going to do, go to the forest or jungle or practice in some very, you know, big, big kind of yoga postures. No, mm. you just have to open your mouth and repeat this mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Then everything is done. I take care, Krishna says, I will handle everything. You don't have to worry. Sarva dharma parityaja maam ekam sharanam vija aham tam sarva papebhya muksyasmi ma sucha. Don't worry. You abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to me. I will deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. So why not we have this trust? We are putting our faith in so many other things mm-hmm. which is all blind. Anything mm-hmm. can collapse. But why not put on God who will never collapse? And that he showed by dealing with Arjuna. Arjuna said, because he was sitting in my chariot, all these big, big generals could not even touch a little hair of my head. So how much Krishna is so much protective of his devotees? Wow. So why not come forward and take shelter of him? Absolutely, I think very well said. And let me ask you, you are here in USA, of course, to share your profound teachings, you know, from Bhagavad Gita. So, in your opinion, tell me what is the most, like, essential teaching of Bhagavad Gita? The most essential thing is this verse I just quoted. 
Krishna says, abandon everything and just surrender to me. Okay. That's almost the last verse of the Gita. Hmm. And even in the, the last verse, whoever have Krishna, Yatra Yogeshwaro Krishna, Yatra Partha Danurdara, Tatra Sriyo Vijayo Buddhi, Durva Nitirma Tirma. He said in that verse that if you keep Krishna and Arjuna with you, hmm. wherever there is Krishna and wherever there is Arjuna, then there will always be victory, opulence, extraordinary power and all moralities. So mm. why not we get all, that's why our daily we are praying, God give me this, God give me that, God give me so many things. So why not just go to him and he will give you anything, everything? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Simple. Mm. So this knowledge has not been there because everybody keeps the Bhagavad Gita. You know where? In the puja room and put some flowers. They don't want to take the book and read, you know. How, how is this knowledge? <laughs> mm. So why not rehear these things from Krishna himself, original God speaking, hmm. and take to his path and everything is finished. And you are going back to God, it is assured. Absolutely. But is there like a magic shortcut to any of this, you know, spiritual perfection? Yes, in Kali Yuga, this is the magic. Simple magic. That's hmm. why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself, when Krishna came, he asked everyone to surrender. Hmm. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, say you surrender or you don't surrender, never mind, you simply chant. Hmm. Just by chanting, everything is handled already. So you do not know, just like you take food when you put into your stomach, you don't know how it works. Transformed into blood, muscle, bone, this, that, it, hmm. automatically. Hmm. Same way, when you chant this name of God, Krishna, then automatically everything will be adjusted for you. And you, going back to the spiritual world, is assured. Hmm. I mean, look, how much it takes just to open the mouth and just say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're talking about food. That reminded me, a lot of people think, you know, if you are spiritual, does diet matter when you are like into spirituality? You see, spiritual thing is very much part of you because you are already, you are a spirit soul. As I have explained, you are not the body. You are not the head, you are not hand, mm. you are not. Mm. So who are you? You are a spirit soul. So being in spirit, spiritual in nature, so you naturally should act in the spiritual plane. So when you are trying to do in your conditioned way of being a material, materially concept, conscious of you know, identifying the body, and that's why you got a lot of problems. Mm. And that was the first thing that Krishna corrected Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. You are talking so many big things, but you do not know that you are not this body. Mm. Mm. You know, so all these kings men you are so concerned about killing, actually their spirit soul, you cannot kill them. So that was the first lesson. So we have to understand how we are a spiritual entity. I think even in your Hindi language, you say, Atmi hai. You, you never say he is the body, you say he is Atma. Atma means soul, is it not? Yes. So you see how the culture is already indoctrinated in your so-called hmm. language. Hmm. The only concept is that they don't know what it is all about. So that is someone has to educate them. Because this is required. Because we are conditioned since time immemorial, so many years we have been into so many bodies, that this message cannot be revived by our own strength. It's not hmm. possible. We have to go to a spiritually enlightened person to get this unlocked, so that we can again come back to our original understanding. That's why Krishna also advised Arjuna, Tadvidi Padipatena Pariprasnena Sevaya Upadeksyanti Tegyanam Yani Natatva Darshuna. You go and approach a self realized soul, and from him you hear this transcendental knowledge, and in which way you will not again get into illusion. Right. See, so a guru is very important. All Indians know that they need a guru. But who is the guru? A bona fide guru is very important. Every doesn't mean that I wear some yellow, I mean cloth and a big long beard, therefore I am a guru. Doesn't make sense. He must come from an authorized disciplined chain. And there's only four authorized chain. You have the Brahma Sampradaya, the Rudra Sampradaya, the Lakshmi Sampradaya, and the Kumara Sampradaya. So unless you're connected to this Sampradaya, He Sampradaya Veena, Te Mantra Nispalaha. If you are not connected, then your mantra will not become very effective. Okay. See, you cannot just learn a mantra from a TV show, no. It doesn't work like that. Of course, I'm giving a show now, but... 
<laughs> but of course, I'm speaking. No, but I'm sure our viewers are enjoying it, and they will have a good time, and definitely they will learn it. Of course, you. if they can just yes. learn this one thing of chanting this mantra, and their life will become perfect. Because this mantra is one thing about special about this mantra. It doesn't require the, any qualification to chant this mantra. It mm. qualifies the chanter. This is difference between other mantras. All other mantras you must get initiated, you must become a Brahmin, what, what, not, exact. But here in this chanting, it doesn't require that. Because this Hare Krishna mantra is so potent that even if you qualified or not qualified, it purifies you. Just like poison. If you take poison knowingly or unknowingly, you will die. Mm -hmm. And that's just a material thing. But imagine the name of God, how powerful it is. See, by just chanting, everything gets settled. You become purified, you are awakened to your original situation as being a servant of God. And you develop love for Him and finally you return home. Just by repeating this Maha Mantra. That's why it is called a Maha Mantra. Our younger generation over here. How, how can we engage them? It is not difficult. Just like this knowledge hmm. is easily available for everybody. Hmm. The soul, it doesn't require the, 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 the stages of being a child or you adult only can do it. Like other yoga, only the adult can do this yoga. Children cannot. But in this case, everyone can do this. Even a child also can chant. Hmm. So it is so easy. And if we teach them this thing, and then the child will benefit because even Pralat Maharaj, I don't know, you know Pralat Maharaj, he is actually the son of Hiranyakashipu who was killed by Narishinga Dev, hmm. half hmm. lion, half man. Hmm. And he is saying, the Kaumaram Acharat Pragyo, you should start this at the early stage as possible, age of five. And if you teach the kid this mantra especially, and the basic thing that you are actually servant of God, Krishna, and you see, his life will become successful. Because if you are connected with God earlier, that's the best, is it not? Right? Why yes. delay? They all think that, no, no, you should grow old and then you should do this. But how, what guarantees that you'll grow old? That's true. So, sooner the better. So you can teach the children to chant. Then your life becomes successful. So, so you are saying basically at an earlier age, like around four or five, uh, you yes, should start doing yes. that. Okay. That would be the best because then you save the children. Because it says also in the scripture, one should not be a father, one should not be a mother, one should not be a guru, one should not be a dem. If they cannot deliver the dependence, if their dependents are in illusion and you have a responsibility like a father and mother, then instead of just giving them this material so-called comfort or education or whatever, this spiritual education is so important because you are actually making sure that he does not take another birth in another mother's womb. Hmm. That is the best safeguard. Otherwise, this material thing will propel him to take some more bodies and you never know, he will end up again as a human being. But if you teach him how to chant, then it is assured, if he doesn't go back for some reason, he will at least get a human birth. Hmm. I mean, look, it's a deal. And on top of that, if you chant Hare Krishna, if you chant, you are going to deliver 21 generations of your father and his father, you know, father and grandfather and so on. 21 generations. Wow. And if you chant, again, your children, 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 21 generations are all going back to the spiritual world. Hmm. This is assured by the Lord Himself. So see, what kind of deal you are getting just by chanting Hare Krishna? Absolutely, I think. It's better than any other yes, deals, yes, just yes. chanting. Especially yes. in this age where you just said, you know, we are so much into the rat race that we got no time. Mm. I mean, why not invest the time in this? While driving, while, yeah. you know, going anywhere, you can always chant. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I think we are running out of time, but my last question to you is any message you have for, you know, all the global audience? Yes, I would. Definitely say that you should all take up this most easy process of chanting Hare Krishna and you see result. You will see for your own self how much you are benefiting. This is the real important thing for everyone to do. Regardless of race, creed, caste, just chant and you see everything will fall in place. 
there's no other easier method in fact krishna says hare nama hare nama hare nama eva kevalam kalau nasteva 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 gatirani in this age of kali there is no other sublime method than chanting the holy name there is no other way there's no other way there is no other way so why not to do what he is telling us to do and that also he said three times when someone tells you to do something three times he must know how serious it is Absolutely. so take advantage and become successful it is for you for you and it has no cost all it is your investment is to open the mouth and just say hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare and thank you so much and in the end i'll say hari krishna and thank you thank you hari krishna alish you chanted now that's good <laughs> <laughs>